So you have these propagating states Z and you have a scattering matrix in between. You have the A's that are incoming and the B's that are outgoing and you have a scattering matrix. You could solve that scattering matrix analytically, it's not that hard. And you have on the boundary end, on the D1, on the one side you couple and on the end side at the edge you couple and you ensure continuity at the boundary points and then you get something that's called QTBM, quantum transmitting boundary equations that was introduced by Craig Lent into this area and you add them to the matrix where you have the wave function on side zero related to the wave function of side one with some alphas and betas. And on the right you do this again with alphas and betas on the right. So you expand your matrix by one element at a time. So you introduce a new wave function zero, that's the boundary condition on the left and on the right. And they're coupled to the center through these alphas and betas, like this. And the incoming waves on the left is A1, and the incoming wave on the right is A2. That's your source. So you shoot the electrons in, and then you compute where the electrons are, with psi. This discretization scheme is stable. Unlike transfer matrices, which are unstable inherently, this discretization is very stable it'll always converge. The bad part is that matrix might be getting very long and you might argue well now I have to invert this whole matrix in order to get this, right? Because you have A X equal B in order to get X do I have to invert A? Not quite so. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about, about that. Oh yeah. So now you can, so this is the typical QTBM approach, quantum transmitting boundary conditions or method. And that's all very nice and very solid. And it's in the Schrodinger way of thinking. If you now want to do the green function way of thinking, you've got to derive self energies rather than uh, additional boundary elements like this. So to do that, you start to discretize your equation again. It's the same discretization scheme. And you know what, in a sense, these boundary conditions are. You know what your A1 and B1 factors are. You can propagate those into the system like this. So it's discretized in this form. This is basically uh, the second line and the last line of the previous slide on this big matrix. You can migrate it in and have a term here that modifies element number one, off diagonal element number one. Ah, go on. And you have a self energy that sits on the diagonal and a source term. So you can identify these self energies and these source terms and you get a modification of the non-Hermitian Hamiltonian to incorporate these boundary conditions. Now you can plug this into non-equilibrium green functions and in, really in three slides I can't explain non-equilibrium green functions to you. I refer you to some things that are on NanoHub later. And the, you get a modified form of the wave functions and the sources the meaning of e energy has changed. It's no longer an eigenenergy, but it's an independent variable that can deal with the excitations of the sources. And you couple these self energies to the left and the right, to the center of the device with the coupling Hamiltonian. And you can do some math that results in a self energy that looks like this. A coupling matrix element tau, gr, tau dagger, with a source term. And now you can formulate this in negative. I'm just going to skip over this rather rapidly. 
where you have identified self energies and these source terms and you reduce your matrix to E minus H minus sigma on some wave function times source to E minus H minus sigma equals inverse equals R. Okay, so these negative equations work for channels with two contacts um, with the channel green functions and you can compute the electron density and the in scattering in the following form. So here is the self energy GR, you have the scattering in scattering in scattering self energies and here are the boundary condition self energies. So I realize I went really fast and in to learn Negev in a full understandable way it'll take a semester. So if you really want to learn it I would recommend you go to nanohub.org slash topics slash Negev. And Superior Data has this full course on how to learn non-equilibrium green functions on the NanoHub. And he'll walk you through step by step. I think that's much more powerful than trying to cram it into a 10 minute lecture. So my goal is really, here are the reference equations, you can use them. If you really want to understand where they're from, you really have to learn it in a slow way and really appreciate it. My side comment is you don't need to read these Russian papers by Keldish, Karanov, Baim. Just go to Supriyadatta's lectures and there's also some introductory papers for engineers. It's much more powerful than reading all these ancient papers. He has a very intuitive way of looking at that. Okay?